It's not easy talking about death with anyone, especially your parents. Here's a pretty common question we receive here at Ask a Mortician. My mom has a lot of issues with death. She's so far into the death denial closet, I'm pretty sure she owns a P.O. box in Narnia. That's good. That's a, that's a good line. I tried to talk to my mother about what happens if she dies or if I die before her. She immediately told me not to talk about things like that, burst into tears, and left the room. What do I do? Step one is the most important of all the steps, and that's to believe that talking about death is the right thing to do. Pick up your sword of righteousness, I don't have a sword, so this is a butter knife, and go into battle facing down your mortality. If you don't have the strength of your convictions, or just don't think it's that important to talk about, the conversation is over before it even starts. Step two is start early. You can't wait until someone has terminal cancer or is in the hospital. You don't win the gold medal at the Good Death Olympics by starting to train three weeks before the event. We're playing the long game here, people. I'm not very good at sports metaphors. That is clear. Step three, be ready to be rejected. You likely will be rejected. It probably won't be as bad as bursting into tears and fleeing the room. It'll probably be something more subtle like Oh, honey, that's a little morbid to talk about. Let's focus on life instead. Or, you're right, hon, we should talk about that. Let's do it later. <laughs> Either way, it's a rejection, and that's okay. After you drop the initial truth bomb, wait a week, come back and say, have you given any thought to our talk about death? Let's make a lunch date. I'm free any day next week. On a personal note, my parents are my hardest customers. I'm used to being rejected in the death talk arena, but that doesn't mean that it's not working over time. Surprise! I'll come home one Christmas, and my mother will have made a spreadsheet of all of her passwords and accounts. Surprise! My parents are cleaning out their garage and attic and mailing everything to me in flat rate boxes via the U.S. Postal Service. Thank you, mother, for this beautiful antique egg cuddler. It's just what I wanted. Surprise! My parents are like, we listed you on our advanced healthcare directive. That's all I ever wanted from my parents. Step four, have sympathy. As people get older, death starts popping up in scary places. Jiminy Cricket. Of course it's hard to face, of course it's hard to talk about, so be nice, use your feelings. I know that this is scary, but it would be really terrifying for me if you were dying or to die and I didn't know what you wanted. Step five, have some facts. It can be important to have some data to show why this is such an important conversation to have. Here's a new study from the Institute of Medicine. People experiencing pain in the last year of their life increased 12% in the last decade. The number of people with depression in the last year of their life increased 26%. A lot of that pain and depression comes from lack of good conversations between patients, doctors, and families. In another study, two-thirds of terminal cancer patients had no conversation with their doctor about how they wanted to die. Armed with those facts, you can acknowledge, we don't want this to happen to you. Step six, know which questions to bring up. Here's a list that I made, partly inspired by Dr. Atul Gawande, which is a fantastic book, by the way, and partly inspired by what I've seen on my job. What do you fear most about dying? What are your hopes about dying? What would be your ideal death? How much do you want medical intervention to play a role? How would you like us to care for your body after you die? What could we do at a funeral or memorial service to make you feel honored? Finally, step seven, treat yourself. <laughs> You have done so well. You deserve a nice dinner, a movie, a cupcake, a champagne, an egg coddler. No, seriously, do, do you want an egg coddler? I've put more links and resources in the description, and please comment with anything that's worked particularly well for you in this conversation. Death isn't easy, but if you use my seven-step guide, it will be quick, painless, and fun. It won't, it will still be 
awful, but maybe a little bit easier? Sorry. Ask a Mortician is brought to you with support from People's Memorial Association and the Co-op Funeral Home, and donations from viewers like you. <laughs> Death is everywhere.